23-12 winner in the 99 kickoff classic. The last time these two met, the only previous meeting, the Buckeyes won a 10-0 game in 1977. And hey, hold on to your hat. Second quarter, it's already 7-0. Ken Dorsey, Andre Johnson. Dorsey overthrows him, and Dustin Fox has the pick. Dustin inside the Hurricane 40-yard line, so the Buckeyes in good shape. Can't move it all that well, so they have to go for three, and they fake it. Jim Trestle getting tricky early. Andy Groom is stopped short, though, and Miami still holds a 7-0 lead. The gamble does not pay off for Trestle. Next possession, third down. Dorsey again having problems. This one tipped, and there's the All-America Mike Doss. And he does a nice job on the run back inside the 20. Another huge turnover going in Ohio State's favor, but they still need to put some points on the board. Down 7-0. Fourth and goal inside the one. They go for it. Craig Krenzel, he's in there. Krenzel carried 19 times in the game for 81 yards. And we're tied at seven. First play of Miami's next possession. Can they answer? Dorsey. That Buckeye defense stripped by Kenny Peterson, recovered by Darian Scott for the Buckeyes. Three straight Ken Dorsey turnovers. Very uncharacteristic. Buckeyes cash in. Maurice Claret. Claret, 22 carries for 47. And Kenny Jim Trestles up 14-7 at halftime. And as surely there's one at halftime in the field goal kicking contest. Krenzel giving it up, though. Picked off Sean Taylor out of the end zone. Looks like he's going places, but Claret, the good angle, strips the ball away. Ohio State has the ball right back. We look again. Claret rips him off. He'll be converted to safety in the pros. Led to a field goal. Buckeyes up 17 to 7. Late in the third now. Miami first to go for the nine. Willis McGay finds some space outside. Goes in from nine. Miami has cut it to a three-point game. It's 17-14. McGay, he carried 20 times for 67 yards, but gets knocked out of the game early fourth on third and 10 from the Buckeye 35. The screen hit hard by Will Allen. McGay, he takes a helmet to the knee. He was down for several minutes, had to be carted off. Here again, a look at that hit suffered by Willis McGay. He an injured left knee. Still no exact word on the severity of that injury, but McGahee left and did not return. It certainly did not look good. Just over five minutes left. Miami inside Buckeye territory. Dorsey down the middle. Orozco Parrish hit. Fumbles. Recovered by Will Allen. Five Miami turnovers, and the Buckeyes still clinging to that three-point lead. Under three minutes to play. Ohio State facing a third and six. Krenzel got to have the first here. Scrambles. Wants the sideline. And it's ruled incomplete. Krenzel just seven of 21 in the game that forced fourth down but take another look a lot of questionable calls and no calls here Chris Gamble how can they not call that no flag on the play and apparently made the catch but the Buckeyes have to punt fourth down Parrish at his 25 Miami needs a big play and this could be it down by three inside the Buckeye 30 and just like that the Hurricanes already in field goal range three seconds to go and Todd Seavers three timeouts were called one by Miami two by Jim Trestle as Seavers was iced for four minutes and 55 seconds and finally he boots it through as time expires from 40 yards and we are tied at 17, going into overtime. The first OT, Miami's first possession. Dorsey was 28 for 43. Kellen Winslow caught 11 balls. That was a good one. Miami's up, but Dorsey's going to yell at people anyway. We have to go back out there again. All right? Stay home. Stay home. Kid has a temper. Ohio State's first possession. Now it's fourth and 14. Kranzel stepping up. Michael Jenkins for the first down. Still alive here. Now fourth and three from the five. Krenzel, a molecular genetics major who isn't. It's incomplete, though. Miami thinks it's over. A near Gatorade experience, but a flag comes late on the play. And in fact, we put a clock to see how late it came. It's like we're running a 40 time. It'd be a fast 40, but it took three and a half. Maybe it was stuck in his pocket. You be the judge. No, he's the judge. He called the penalty. It is a call. First and goal. And Krenzel smashes home. Game tied at 24 apiece. Steven. Kenneth, they'd have to go to a second overtime. And who do you go to if you're the Buckeyes? Maurice Claret makes one guy miss and he's in. 
Ohio State back on top 31 24. So now it's Miami's turn facing a fourth and three. Got to have it here. It's the big play guy Kellen Winslow. What a night he had as Kenny said 11 catches for 122 gets the first down. First and goal inside the five. Derek Payton in there for McGay. He has stopped short. Second and goal. Dorsey has Eric Winston but he overthrows him. Dorsey 28 of 43 for 296. Quantrine Hill stops short. So here we go. Fourth and goal. Dorsey this for the tie. And the Buckeyes win 31-24. Just Dorsey's second loss as a starter. Larry Coker's first as a head coach. Miami's 34-game winning streak is snapped. The Buckeyes' fifth national championship and their first since 1968. 14-0. The Ohio State University. The national champions. So Miami's five-game bull win streak comes to an end. Ken Dorsey ends his career. Miami 38-2 as the start of the last loss against Washington in September of 2000. The Hurricanes turned it over five times to two by Ohio State. We're going to hear from our guys led by Chris Fowler, but first, the coach of Ohio State is going to sing. Tradition that Jim Tressel brought back to Ohio State at the post-game singing of Carmen, Ohio. It has never been sweeter than surrounded by maybe 50,000 scarlet and gray fans here in the desert. Coach, congratulations on national nice championship. Just Thank a brilliant you. effort by you and your staff and your entire team. Not many folks gave you a chance, but you seem to be walking around like a guy who kind of knew something everybody else didn't this week. Well, I think this. We knew we were playing the best team in the country, and, and uh, you know, I don't know if they knew that they were playing a team equally as good. Uh, I don't know that, but I knew one thing. Our kids would play all day long. They would never stop, and uh, they're an outstanding bunch. Coach, the matchup with your defense, the speed that you guys have played with all year, against what we kept hearing about over and over, Miami's speed is just too devastating for anybody. Going into the game, did you know you could control things with the speed of your defense and the, and the scheme? Well, I thought we could match up fairly well. Mark D'Antonio and his defensive staff did an extraordinary job all year long. Uh, you know, they matched up, and, you know, we had our ups and downs a little bit, but, you know, we felt like as the season went along, we were becoming a very, very good defense. From a coach's standpoint, you had four national titles for the Youngstown State, now one with the Buckeyes. How does it feel? <laughs> you know, it feels wonderful. It, anytime you have a chance to stand alone at the top of that yeah. mountain with the people you love and, and uh, with the people you love to represent, you know, there's um, no feeling I like know. it, and it's incredible. I know that. This national title dream <laughs> could have died anywhere along the way. Cincinnati or Purdue or Illinois or Michigan. Again tonight, Craig Krenzel stepped up and made some, some clutch plays. Really, whatever you ask him to do, run, throw, just lead. Talk about his play tonight. Well, you know, we've had a lot of great quarterbacks at Ohio State that just know how to win. Rex Kern, who was in our locker room. Kirk Herbstreit, who's right here. <laughs> you know, we're just an outstanding bunch. Craig Krenzel knows how to win. The toughness he showed. You guys used him as a runner a lot, and it gave Miami troubles. He was the leading rusher in the game for either team. Well, I think he had about 80 yards, and, and we kind of think if you can end up with more than 50 net yards as a quarterback, that's a dimension that a defense can't account for. It seemed like you guys found a way to utilize his running ability by using formations. You can see the attempts. 19 carries for Craig Krenzel against the Miami Hurricanes defense. Was that something coming into the game you tried to use by moving Claret out and trying to take advantage of the quarterback draw? It's almost a sweep. Well, yeah, we, we really felt that they were going to make sure they left two guys on Jenkins and they were going to try to play man-to-man -man under some of our other guys. And, and we just felt that that was a, a, something that we could take care of by letting Craig run there. He's a smart runner. He keeps his shoulder square. He finds good yards and um, it was part of our plan and he executed it along with the guys up front well. So many big moments for your team on fourth down all season long in this game tonight. Monster fourth down plays in overtime. You had the fourth and 14. Talk about the catch by Jenkins here. Well, you know, this was a heck of a route. Craig stepped up there and, and uh, Michael did a great job with the comeback route and and then here's the interference call. Uh, you like the call? Well, you know, uh, yeah, we do. Of course. I, I tell you what, it was Craig's idea to throw this route, and he said, I'm going to throw it right in there, and, and uh, you know, we're going to get that touchdown, and he put it on the money and got interfered with. Coach, after 14 games and so many close calls, when you look back in the offseason about this team, what made them so special, so many people questioning their talent, what will you remember about this group 10 or 20 years from now? 
you know, that they were so willing to grow together and learn to care about one another. And, you know, this is a group that's been through transition, and they've been through some tough times, and, you know, they were just so willing to, to grow together and, and develop great relationships. Pretty fitting this team had the defense on the field at the end of the game, Lee. I said I thought that uh, Miami had the best players and you had the best football team. How did you get these guys to play such a fine football game as a team? Well, you know, that they care about each yeah, other. You know, they know that that each one of them has a role, not one more important yeah. than the other. And they know the role that our fans have. They know the role that our band has. They know the role that our university has. And they know the role that the scout team has. Our scout team worked hard. We tried to give our defense as much speed running into our guys as we could. And they ran as fast as their little 4.7 legs could take them. You know, <laughs> and they just did a great job. And just everyone did all they could do. Hey, I hate to look ahead, but Kirkus Point, now you got almost the entire offensive to you coming back. You lose Dawson, Wilhelm, and some key guys. But you got something started here with this much talent coming back. Well, you know, Kirk stops around the office because he lives right there in Columbus and puts the pressure on us and makes sure hey. we're working hard. So we get in early so he doesn't beat hey, us to the office. You're the team with the streak now. So so you got 14 game winning streak taking in the next season. Jim, congratulations. Thanks, Chris. Well done. Lee, thank you. First Thanks. Buckeye title in 34 years. Miami's streak is snapped at 34. And there's going to be one heck of a party here in Tempe. Another one back in Columbus. We're back. There's Brutus. There's the Buckeyes. There's the Circuit City, the Fiesta Bowl trophy. National champions for 2002 with a perfect 14 0 record. Thanks in large part to this guy right here, quarterback Craig Krenzel. Not the prettiest quarterback in the world, I gotta say that everybody knows that, but boy, for clutch play and toughness of whatever the team asks you, you're, you're the leading rusher today. You're more of a ball carrier <laughs> than a passer. <laughs> yeah, we, we came into the game with some design quarterback runs, um, with the with the know-how that Miami uh, you know is vulnerable to step up at certain times, and I just tried to go out and do whatever, do whatever it takes to win. Miami's defense known for their speed. Did it get old? Did you guys get tired of hearing about it all year long or all week and all month long about you guys don't have the speed to match up with Miami? Did you guys have a point to prove tonight? You know, it never really bothered us much. We knew uh, we knew coming to this game that we were confident in our abilities. Uh, we knew Miami was an excellent football team. Obviously, they're probably one of the fastest teams in the country. Uh, but at the same time, we, we felt that we could go out and we had we had speed at all the right positions and that you know, obviously different type of game plan, different style of football, but we felt we matched up well with them. And, uh, you know, we, we, set, we set some history tonight. Decision-making for a Jim Trestle quarterback seems to be one of the most important things throughout this game. No, very few quarterbacks can go throughout a game flawlessly. What was the key for you coming out and making good decisions against a defense that has dominated a lot of teams? Well, you know, there, there were a couple of plays where I didn't make great decisions or I didn't make my decision quick enough, the interception in the end zone. Um, our tight end, Ben Hartsock, was open, and I just didn't give him the ball quick enough. Um, you know, their safety made a great play, um, kind of baited me a little bit. Um, you know, other times I just try to, you know, if, if we have a certain play called, I try to go through my progressions. If it's not there, um, throw it away or just tuck the ball and get what I can get. Interesting night for your backfield mate, Maurice Claret. We call you guys the yin and the yang, the, the fire and ice, <laughs> different personalities. Kind of held in check as a runner, gets a couple touchdowns, but then has the stolen ball play and bails you out by far well, your worst was, play of the night, the pick up in the end zone um, by Taylor. Yeah, you know, that was an outstanding play. I, uh, I was actually hustling to try to make a tackle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you all had it on the replay. I got blasted. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> didn't even see. Didn't even see what Maurice did. But all I know is the bottom line is we had the ball back, and uh, yeah, that was a great effort for, for him to, to go get the ball and have us salvage. How do you maintain this in overtime, play after play? You got to be battling mental and physical fatigue. I mean, this goes. It was like 25 plays in overtime alone. You know, in a game like this, you, you don't really think about that. You know, with everything on the line in a game that emotional and that close, it's, uh, you know, none of that ever crosses your mind. We were, we were, we remain focused on what we need to do to, to go out and prove everybody wrong and prove that we were, the, you know, that we deserve to be national champs. Speaking about proving everybody wrong. Yeah, he's, he think, had the beak on before the game. Right, and they told me he had the beak on, so let's see you put that I national championship out. He's a tough out. quarterback. <laughs> this guy right here, he's a believer. No, I can't oh, be a believer after the game. It can't believer. be. <laughs> we just, just got to come out and do it all again next year. Hey, you guys are the ones with the streak now, and you're back, and so is everybody else, Craig. So we wish you the best of luck. Have a great offseason. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Krenzel, quarterback of the national champion, Ohio State Buckeyes. The 34-year drought is over, and that is a sweet post-game hug. Maurice Croyd coming up shortly. That's coming in, but lo and behold, Strange things happen That's in national right. title games. This had to be the greatest national championship game college football has ever seen. And this guy was a big part of it. Maurice Claret, 
A year ago, you're a recent high school graduate. Now you're sitting here as a national championship in college. You seem a little glazed. It's hard to get, hard to sink in, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool though. <laughs> yeah, I know you'll take it. Yeah, so you were such a focal point all week long. It was such a tough week for you. It was so many microphones in your face and, and, and the controversy. Nice way to end this week. Did that have any impact at all on you? No, not really. Um, not really. <laughs> not really. Just, just football. Tonight, though, you think you, you, you told me you were surprised by the speed of Miami's defense. You're a little better than they thought you were. Even. No, I thought um, I didn't think they were that fast. I think people, I thought people were really blown out of proportion. But when you got out there and ran with them, you were like, man, it's doing fast. <laughs> what, what was the key? What was, what was the key, Maurice? As far as as the game went on and you saw that speed, it seemed like as the game went on, you became more effective. What did you see that allowed you to be able to pick up more yards? Uh, I was coming to the sideline, Eddie George was saying, "Be patient," because uh, he'd been in those type games before. And he just kept on saying, be patient. Him and Jonathan Wells, and I was like, oh, man, I don't want to hear this. So we need to do something different. They just kept on saying, be patient. And I was being patient after a while, and things just started to go my way. It, do, is it tough to battle the frustrations at that point when you come into a national championship game, you want to do so well early, yeah. and all of a sudden it's kind of like it's on the back burner. So is that something maybe you were able to learn in this game, patience? I think so. I, uh, I learned it a whole lot this game, being in uh, this type caliber game. And, um... I think I was just trying, in the beginning of the game, I was trying to rush everything, trying to make too many things happen, uh, getting too down on myself and things like that. But uh, as the game went on, I just started listening to the older people, Eddie George, Coach Spencer, Jonathan Wells. Uh, everything came everything came true that they said. You might have a future as a two-way player on defense because it might have <laughs> been your biggest player of the night. Crenshaw <coughs> makes the decision, throws the ball in the end zone. Sean Taylor, the pick. And you go strip the ball. Take us through this, Maurice. Uh, well, uh, Coach Spencer always talk about uh, helping me standing around when uh, somebody intercepts the ball. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I mean, you went after it. And it wasn't just uh, a tackle. It was a takeaway. That would move things around. You kicked a field goal out of that drive. Yeah, I jammed my neck, too. <laughs> How <laughs> did you? Yeah, they slammed my head in the ground. Were you surprised he decided to take that, try to go 100 yards? I, I was surprised. I thought he was going to just take a kneel in the game, and I saw how sloppy he was holding the ball. He just swinged all around. I'm like, I'm only going to take this. <laughs> we, we've asked every player that's come up here about respect, and you guys have been getting a lack of respect for the last 40 days. We've talked to them about team speed. How important was it for you guys to show that you could play with Miami and the athletic ability of Miami? I think it was uh, very important for us to get confidence back in our program and respect for our program. I think uh, after this season, people respect us now, and uh, I think people will take us a little bit more serious. And things are uh, coming back next year, people will just take us more serious. I want to show what the eventual game-winning touchdown here in overtime. Talk about this. You, an emotional display. It had been a long, frustrating night for you, as we talked about at times. <laughs> just powering in there. Uh, uh, number 63, Adrian Clark, he uh, was telling me the whole time, stay behind me, stay behind me, stay behind me, and we'll get any kind of type of block. And I saw number 36, the safety come down in the box. I just kind of like side, sw side swipe him, and uh, I seen him grab my leg, so I just dove in the end zone. Maurice, all this whole year, you had a lot of pressure on you. What did you learn this year to help you be a better football player, maybe even a better person? Uh, respect. Respect other people. Respect the players. Respect the game. Uh, just respect, you know what I mean? Uh, Everything's not going to go your way all the time, but just uh, respect everybody. Yeah. As far as looking back at this year, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, some exposure early maybe you weren't ready for as a young, true freshman. What did you learn maybe from that aspect that will help you next year and the year after that? Uh, hopefully the early exposure. Uh, I kind of get used to the hype, uh, the media, um, I guess things like that, but uh, I can't really put my finger on one thing right now. You guys are the guys with a streak now, 14 straight <laughs> wins. You're going to be the defending champion. This whole offense is back and most of the defense. You guys ready to ready this to go go. dynasty in Columbus? <laughs> we take two weeks off and then it happens and they're running again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's two-week vacation, then back uh, trying to repeat next year? Yeah, try. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe, you're uh, soaking the cold tub and then the plane trip home. So it's been a, a long, tough week for you. Well done. Congratulations, yeah, national sure championship. Back. Maurice Clorat, 19-year-old star of the Buckeyes, who are headed home with a national championship. It's going to be sweet. College coaches aren't stupid. They saw the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl, and they saw Ohio State take down Miami. So Ohio State is number one in all the land in the USA Today slash ESPN Coaches Bowl. Of course, Miami stays at two. Georgia, USC, Oklahoma follow the top five right there.
Okay, Ohio State, 34 years without a title. You're an 11 and a half point underdog facing a team that had won 34 games in a row. You win in two overtimes. Maybe not the greatest comeback ever, but certainly the latest comeback. Constitutes something of an upset. The two beating one isn't necessarily blowing us away. We have many others. In fact, the top 10 championship game upsets in chronological order. We're not rating them here. This is 65 Orange Bowl. Number five, Texas taking down number one, Alabama. Still strangely, Joe Namath from the Tide remained number one. Number nine, the 73 Sugar Bowl. That's Bama quarterback Richard Todd on the reception end of that touchdown. It's a two-point game after a missed PAT, but Notre Dame's Bob Thomas kicks the winning field goal, and the Irish take it 24-23. 78 Cotton Bowl, Joe Montana. He'd later become a part car owner in the card series. Is that Hooking what up to him? Vegas Ferguson, Notre Dame smote Texas 38-10. Number seven, the 79 Sugar Bowl, one year after that. Bear Bryant's Alabama squad running that wishbone, and they upset the number one ranked Penn State Nittany Lions, 14-7. Just for the record, I thought I got run off the air pretty quick on that old lead-in thing. Let's go to number six, 83, Sugar. Todd Blackledge cranking it out. His great Garrity, 48-yard touchdown. Penn State takes down Georgia that day, 27-23. Joe Paterno. Carried off by his peeps. I said peeps. Number five, we're glad you did. 84 Orange Bowl, Nebraska down one. Tom Osborne going for two and the win. Turner Gill knocked away. And number five, Miami beats number one, Nebraska. Turner Gill, of course, later went on to a great At number career. four, chronologically, <laughs> cutting off Steve. The 87 Fiesta, Vinny and the guys in fatigue. Some people do think football's war. Vinny picked off at the goal line with 18 seconds left to play. And Penn State, a winner, 14 to 10. Let's carry off Joe Paterno again, save his legs. But Miami got it back the next year, 88 Orange Bowl. Steve Walsh, 18 of 20 for 209 and two touchdowns, including that decisive score to Michael Irvin. And number two, Miami beats number one, Oklahoma. Number two, Crosley, 93 Sugar Bowl. Number one, Miami trailing. Number two, Alabama, 27 to six. Gino Toretta hooking up. Lamar Thomas looks to be a long touchdown. George Teague, shades of Maurice Claret. Taking it away, Bama wins 34-13. Let's carry off Joe Paterno anyway. No. Number one, the 2003 Fiesta Bowl. Todd Seavers at the buzzer, knocks it through. Miami forces overtime with Ohio State in the second OT. The freshman, Maurice Claret, the franchise. Into the end zone to give the Buckeyes the lead. Miami gets the last chance on the second overtime. Fourth and goal, Dorsey incomplete. The Buckeyes win 31-24, but this likely won't make Miami's top 10 list. For more, we go back to Tempe. Ken Dorsey's 40th and final start as a college football quarterback ends in just his second defeat. His performance certainly flawed, but also quite courageous. You know, it's just, uh, you know I just felt a, a sharp pain, but... You know, it kind of kind of subsided there. Ken, how deflating was it from a game you grew up? Well, we feel like you know we've got we've got other great players, and and Jared Payton is a an excellent football player. So we felt like we can still do everything we want to do with Jared Payton in the game. Have you had time to think about the streak being over? No. Just. Uh, you know, losing a, a national championship, you don't really think about anything else but losing that game. As you're playing an amazing game like that, do you think about the history, that this is history with these overtimes? <laughs> you know, you'd be able to, I think, appreciate a lot more if you're on the winning side. What about the call? Running out in the field, the game was over, and then you had to run back. I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see the penalty, but, uh, you know, they, they called it, and... Uh, you got to be able to overcome those things. One of college football's all-time winners, very gracious in defeat, by far the most painful of the two losses that he's had in his college career. Two interceptions and a fumble, a very tough night on him, but it was made so by that Ohio State defense. Well, it was also made because Ohio State took away Willis McGahee in the Hurricanes running game. 65 yards on the ground. They averaged 193 coming into this game. You take away McGahee, you can then put pressure on Dorsey. Very difficult for Ken Dorsey to endure this loss. It's the first time in a long, long time. But after a week or two, he'll get his head back up. He has a lot to be proud of. Everybody who follows college football, will remember Ken Dorsey as a winner. What happened on Dorsey, he come out early in the ball game, hit the touchdown pass, two interceptions, came back, 
rallied him to a chance to win the football game. He's got a lot of character, that kid. His career ends with the incompletion harassed by a Buckeye blitz on the goal line. And Miami's streak ends at 34 games in about 845 days between losses. Wow, Are we going to see anything? And let's put no. this in perspective with the streak finally over in modern college football with scholarship limitations. No, Will that no. be surpassed? This is like a Joe DiMaggio hitting streak. You're not going to see this again no. in college football because of scholarship reductions, the parity, each conference that you look to, you have seven and eight teams that are competitive. It's too tough week in and week out to continue to win football games. Look at this year. It was a missed field goal against Florida State by this much. They had some close calls. I don't think we're going to see it again in college football. It's too tough. Well, Ohio State's championship run also had some close calls and they had some clutch plays once again in this championship game fourth down <laughs> overtime here's Krenzel again stepping up big well, this is fourth and 14 at this point it looked pretty hopeless for Ohio State look at the pressure that's on Krenzel steps into the pocket makes a great throw <coughs> to Jenkins and this is the fourth and three Glenn Look, Sharp, the freshman corner. That's uh, going to be debated in Miami that's, for a that's long pass, time. That's pass interference on Glenn Sharp there, the freshman. Coming back to the ball, the official waited. Or the referee could not get the flag out. Big 12 officials. Did. Lee, what do you think? Was that a good call? Well, Great call. I tell you what, <laughs> you like Ohio State. I thought Miami was going to win a game. I thought it was a lousy <laughs> call. But the thing about it is the official, I don't think the official that was sitting there called that play. The guy ran from someplace else and threw that. The back guy, the back line. Just yeah, if that guy was sitting there, they were calling it. Call it no. We yeah. talked about Woody Hayes watching somewhere, wherever he is, 34 years between championships. And everybody that, that followed this team knows it's fitting to end that championship with the defense on the field guarding those last two yards of turf in Miami's final four plays. Perfect ending, really, storybook. Perfect ending for Ohio State. I think Ohio State proved the athletic ability on their defense. For them to be able to take away Miami's running game and allow them to put pressure on Ken Dorsey gave them confidence to win this game. And that was the big thing, confidence. They needed something to happen in this game to make themselves believe. And as the second quarter ended, they went to halftime with a lead of 14-7 to with only 80 yards of offense. They believed in themselves and that was the key finding some early success to believe throughout the game that they could win I saw Ohio State win three football games and I don't think I've ever been more impressed with the way a football team wins than Ohio State I never saw dirty plays or anything else these guys play football the way college football should be played and now they're the national championship and they that's win. a hell of a compliment yep. sure is and they win the championship with the same blueprint they followed all season <laughs> long have you seen a better national title game in no, college football history? Never. No, no. That was I don't think so. It. Was it's one for the ages, and the Buckeyes have a championship that has been three decades in the making. Wow. Tempe, Columbus, party on.